Welcome students to our first video segment for our semester. In this video segment we will cover section 12.1 three-dimensional coordinate systems. This course is essentially a repetition of or kind of a generalization of rather um, two of two courses that you've had already pre-calculus and calculus one. What we do though is we look at those courses in, in uh, dimensions higher than two. We do a lot of our, our work in three-dimensional in, 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 uh, three systems, uh, whereas in pre-calc and calc one, all of your work was done in two dimensions in the xy plane. Okay, So to review with you a little bit of terminology first, most of, most of pre-calc and calc one took place in what's called R2. R2 is nothing more than the XY plane, and it's the, it's the set of all A comma B ordered pairs such that A and B are real numbers. So this is a real, real fancy way of saying the XY plane. Okay. Most of our work in this course is going to take place in R3. R3 is the set of all A, B, C such that A, B, and C are real numbers. So the, uh, R3 can be considered a set of, of all ordered triples whereas R2 is a set of all ordered pairs. We have special names for these, these uh, spaces, these, these uh, different dimensional spaces. We call R2 Two space, two space. We call R3 three space. If we were just looking at the number line, that would be R. We call that one space. Now, while most of our work in this in this uh, uh, course happens in three space, there is no restriction to the to the dimension of the space. We can have four space set of all ordered uh, ordered arrangements of four. Uh, numbers, etc., etc., etc. So in general, we can we can concern ourselves with n-dimensional space, R n, and a lot of work in R n occurs in our next course, Math 250. So back to our course, though. <clears throat> the um, the thing is, we need to be able to graph points in three dimensions. Okay. For me, the hardest part of of this course. It's gotten a little easier over the years, but the hardest part of this course is actually graphing three-dimensional objects on, on our two-dimensional paper. So let's um let's start. How do we how do we graph how do we graph points in three space in R three? So to do that, let's see how let's let's go back to how we might graph a point in two space. Okay. Suppose, for example, we want to plot the point one. Two. Okay, I know you know how to plot the point one two. The idea here is to somehow generalize the idea of graphing though in uh, three space from from two space. So to plot the point one two, we would mark off on the x-axis uh, a distance we want to call one unit. Along the y-axis, we would correspondingly mark off a distance of one, and then we'd draw another uh, tick mark at two. We would move x, we would move one in the x direction, two in the y direction, and we would plot the point one, two. Just like that. So you discovered right away I'm not an artist, so so my my graphs might be a little questionable, but I think they get the work, they, they get the job done. So to, to plot a point in three space, what I want to do is I want to take just the just the um, the xy plane itself, without without drawing a, a another axis or anything, I want to lay it flat. I want to draw it flat. And and if if uh, if you're not sure what I mean, let me show you. Imagine taking the the xy plane as I have got it graphed there, and draw it flat. So I think I'm able to do that here. So let's do this. So what I've drawn now um, is a copy of another copy of the um, XY plane, but it looks kind of funny. What I'd like you to try to, to envision here 
is that the the the, ang the uh, line that appears to be at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizon that's the x-axis and we envision that no, that line is coming out of the page coming out of the screen so this is the x-axis that used to be marked off up here um, this is now the horizontal axis is now uh, the y-axis okay and to plot the the point one two I would move one unit coming out of the page, one unit in the x direction, and along the y axis I would graph two units, one, two, and I would construct the same rectangular box, but in perspective here, this is sort of in three dimensions now, uh, I would plot the point one, two, as this little point in the corner of the box is the exact same, it's the exact same point that I graphed earlier. I'm trying to fix my earlier graph. A little better, I think I can do this. Not that much better. It's the exact same little box, the exact same little corner point representing one, two, but it's drawn flat. It's drawn flat. Now, what I want to do is consider now in three space, plotting the point, plotting the point, uh, one, two, three. Okay, in, in this uh, point, the, the first coordinate is the x coordinate, the second coordinate, that's the y coordinate, and the third coordinate is the z coordinate. So we're going to need another axis. We're going to need another axis. So what we would do is we would draw another axis, which we'll call the z axis. And the z axis will be will be drawn vertically, straight up. If I could do it, let's see. Still getting used to this surface. Most of my career, I spent. Uh, drawing on a whiteboard or chalkboard. So let's see. My surface is going to allow me to do this. I need another axis. I need another line. So here's my, here's my line. There it is. Coming straight up. That, at, that line is the positive Z axis. The positive Z axis. And then to continue on our point or plotting of the point one, two, three, we would mark off on that z axis one to the vertical axis, actually up straight up and down. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then where we left off with the point one, comma, two in the xy plane, we would move up three units. The way we would actually do this to be really, really accurate is instead of constructing a, um, a rectangle to plot the point one, two, we're going to construct a rectangular box to plot the point one, two, three. So all of this is taking place in three space now. All of this is taking place in three space. What you should see happening, forming before your very eyes, is a small rectangular box in three space. Okay. The origin, the origin is represented by the ordered triple zero zero zero. So to plot the point one two three, you can imagine moving. And I'm going to change colors here. Make things show up a little better. Moving one along the x in the x direction two in the y direction and three units along the we're going along the edges of this little box three units vertically upward to get to the point so again we've moved one unit along in the x direction in the y direction two units in the z direction three units and that gets us this point one two three it takes some getting used to um, you're, I think you're going to be able to lock onto it mentally. Um, 
I'm, I'm able to lock, I was able to lock onto it mentally much more quickly than to do it physically. Uh, after, after 30 years of teaching this course, I still, I still have problems graphing. So, and that brings up a good point. When on your, on your exams and on homework and stuff, I don't expect that you're going to come up with, with really precision, precision drawn graphs in three space. Some people are going to be able to do that. Some people are just natural artists that way. Uh, I don't think most of us are. I think most of us are have a hard time doing this in, three, in uh, drawing in three dimensions. In any case, <clears throat> this is this is how we would plot a point in three space. Okay, and you're going to have some homework to practice with this. Um, there's there's a there's a little bit of a discussion that needs to take place about the that third axis. You notice that I drew the third axis, the positive direction upward and. Why not have the positive direction downward? Well, we have to we have to make a uh, a convention about how we're going to do that. We have to all agree on on how we're going to orient the axes. And the way we orient the axes is given by this thing called the right hand rule. If you've had physics and you've studied vectors and stuff, you know what that rule is already. But that's the the right hand rule gives us a way of deciding where the z axis is once we've decided where the x and y axes are. The way we imagine, or the way we decide on the direction for the z-axis is this. So what you're seeing is the positive x, positive y, and positive z axes. So it's very, very common to put the, the positive x-axis coming out of the page or out of the, out of the screen. Okay, now it's also very common to put the, the positive y-axis axis uh, in the same position as you would have had the positive x-axis drawn in two space. Once we've done that, we use something called the right-hand rule, the right-hand rule to decide on the direction of the z-axis, whether it points upward or downward. And here's a description of that. Imagine taking your right hand right now and pointing it in the direction of the positive x-axis and then curl your fingers toward the positive y-axis. So put your, push your fingers in the direction, point your hand in the direction of the, of the positive x-axis. Now imagine curling your fingers in the direction of the positive y-axis. The direction in which your thumb will be pointing that's the direction of your z-axis, positive z-axis. So in this case, the positive z-axis would be going directly upward. Okay, okay. and that's a that's a very standard uh, way to decide on on where the z-axis is pointing. And this semester, um, this is this is the this is the space where we're going to spend most of our most of our lives. Okay, so let's let's um let's let's start. By, or let's continue by taking a look at um, how to graph equations, equations in R3. Okay, so I'll start with a with a with a kind of a review question. Generally speaking, what do equations in R2 represent geometrically? Let me repeat that. So what? Two equations in R2 represent? You know the answer to this. You may not think you do right now at the moment, but you know the answer. So some of you some of you probably thought of the answer right away, but what do they represent? And and um, it we this is a this is a perfect way to to review all of the all of the the pre calc and the calc one that uh, that you that you studied at least graphically what do all those what do all those equations represent and they represent curves they re, they represent curves okay so generally speaking equations in r2 that means equations involving uh, x's and y's uh, represent curves <clears throat> Um, so, generally then, what do you expect equations in R3 to represent? In fact, um, the, way I've, the way I've written this 
this uh, question is probably a little misleading. It, maybe a better way to state this would be a better way to state this question is what do equate in in R two? Yeah, this is better. I should have thought of this. In R two, what do equations uh, involving x and y involving x and or y involve one or the, the, the other or both x and or y represent? That might be a better way to, to read to state that last question. And the answer is curves. The answer is curves. Okay, we spent a lot of time with you guys in, in, uh, in pre-calc and in, uh, calc one graphing, graphing. Okay, in fact, the most important thing in pre-calc is to, is to graph functions by memorizing a whole bunch of standard functions and then using transformations uh, to, to come up with new graphs and stuff. And in, and in calc one, one of the two primary questions is to find the find the slope of a tangent line to a curve, and we use that slope to determine the graph of the curve where it's increasing and decreasing, concave up and that stuff. So, in the 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 bottom line is curves in with x's and y curves in R two, rep, um, sorry in R two equations involving x and y represent curves. So, what about in R three? So, in R three, um, what do Let's do it this way. Let's do, use the same same question in R three. Then, what do equations involving x, y, and or so any, any combination of x's and y's and, and or z's? What do they represent? What do they represent? Represent. I can't even spell represent. Let's see. I could have edited this so you never had to see it, but oh well. What do they represent? And the answer is they represent surfaces. Surfaces or are also curves. So surfaces surfaces and curves. Okay, so let's practice. Let's practice with this idea of graphing in R3. So for example, for example, sketch, or let's say, let's do this, describe and sketch. Example, let's say part A. X equals 2 in R2. So this is old news for you. So we're, uh, we're basically in the, in the realm of, of pre-calc right now. So what does X equals 2 represent in R2? And it would take you probably a, a couple of seconds to figure this out if you don't remember. It represents a line. Re represents what kind of a line? It represents a vertical line. How do I know? Because no matter what, x must be 2. y is not in this equation. So no, if I let x equal 2, and y equal any possible value, the equation x equals 2 is still satisfied. So I can have 2 comma 0, 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 2 comma negative 1, 2 comma negative pi. So we get a vertical line. So vertical line. Vertical line passing through x equals 2. So let's graph or describe and gravy graph B x equals two. However, x equals two in R three. X equals two. But now I want to graph this in R three. 
Okay, so imagine what the points are going to look like uh, algebraically. Remember, points in R3 have three coordinates, x, y, and z. The, the first coordinate is 2. The two co other coordinates are not specified. So no matter what I choose for y and z, as long as x equals 2, I'm glad x equal 2, then the, then the equation is satisfied. Let's see, let's see what we might get if we, we have that, if we have this, this uh, ordered triples uh, prescribed this way. So here are the axes. X, I've only drawn the positive x axis, and the y and z axes. Now, where is x equals 2? Well, two, x equals 2 is 2 units in front of the yz plane along the x-axis. So here's x equals 2, x equals 1, x equals 2. Now, as, as long as x equals 2, y and z can be anything. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw in red a line parallel to the y-axis. Draw a little line parallel to the y-axis. Every point on that line parallel to the y-axis is, is also satisfied by x equals 2. So x can equal 2 and y can equal 1 or 2 or 3. But I could also have every point on a little vertical line passing through x equals 2. Every point on that little vertical line would also satisfy x equals 2. The z coordinate would be any coordinate. So what I'm going to do with that little translated set of red axes is I'm going to construct a little plane. I'm constructing a little plane and that little plane is the graph of x equals 2. Let me explain a little more carefully. So in green, I'm going to plot a point on that plane. In green, I would let x equals 2, y equals something, and z equals something. And I would end up at the point 2, y, z. Now that little point, a really thick point actually, was obtained by letting y be something positive and z be something positive. But I could also have x equals 2. Let's do this in, uh, let's say, blue. x equals 2. Uh, y equals something negative. Or the y-axis is horizontal now, and z be something positive. And I'm looking at a point, 2 for x, and y and z, where y is negative and z is positive. So as long as x equals 2, I'm on this plane. So let's describe it. That's the, 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 the task is to describe this. Well, it's a plane, but there are a lot of planes. What kind of a plane? So we could describe it as a plane parallel to the yz plane. It's a plane parallel to the yz plane. Two units, two units in front of the yz plane. There are other ways to describe this. This was just off the top of my head. We could have also described this as a vertical plane. A vertical plane. Vertical, vertical quantities move up and down. The z-axis moves up and down. A vertical plane passing through x equals 2. I won't write that down, but that's also a, a perfectly legitimate answer. A vertical plane passing through uh, x equals 2. Let's take a look at another one. How about something like c, z equals negative 1, z 
equals negative 1. Okay. Well, what do the points look like on this? There's no there's no say there's no statement of what x should satisfy, there's no statement of y in this, but z must be negative 1. So what are we going to get? What are we going to get? X and Y can be anything, but Z must, and, and there, your hint is in this, the way I'm going to state this, Z must go down 1. X and Y can be anything. Now remember, the XY plane is now visualized as horizontal. X and Y can be anything, but Z must be negative 1. So I'll draw it in a minute, but that pretty much says that we're looking at a horizontal plane, one unit below the XY plane. Looks like we're, look, we're, we're considering a horizontal plane, a horizontal plane, one unit, one unit below the XY plane. Or you could have said, Something like a horizontal plane passing through z equals negative 1. That would work also. So let's take a look at the graph. So off camera, I drew a copy of the uh, three axes. So here are the, oops, I think I lost my x axis somehow. Let's see if I can get it back. I might have to go off camera again. Well, there it is. Okay, so here is the x axis. Here is the y-axis, here is the z-axis, and z must equal negative 1. z must equal negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to use a, some red again to help me draw this. z equals negative 1 along all points parallel to the y-axis and along all points parallel x-axis so what I've drawn basically is a is a copy of the xy plane shifted down one unit and I'm going to complete this drawing by drawing the actual plane or portion of the plane I'm doing all this by hand and rather using rather than using pictures because I want you to see uh, what you can expect to be doing. Your, your graphs are going to be formed by hand. A lot of your work is going to be graphing by hand. And this is, this is, a, a, this is an example of, of how to do that. Okay, if you have better techniques, then you, well, by all means use them. I, again, I'm not an artist. I, I, the far from it. This is, the, this is the most difficult thing for me to do, is to, is to graph things in three dimensions. And I think I mentioned this, but it has not gotten easier over 30 years of doing it. Okay, okay, D. Um, let's say uh, x plus y equals 2. And let's say in R2. Okay, so what does x plus y equals 2 represent in R2? This, this one should be very quick for you. It's a line. It's a line with it, with x and y intercepts of both being two. Okay, so let's see. Let's get a graph of that. So here's the xy plane. Let's see if I can get away with using uh, my surface to do this. There it is. So there's the line x plus y equals 2, x equals 0, y equals 2, y equals 0, x equals 2. So we get a line. Yeah, okay. So we get a line. Uh, a line passing through a whole bunch of ways we can describe this. A line passing through. Uh, 2, 0, and 0, 2. So a line whose intercepts are both 2, 0, and 2, and 0, 2. Now I'm going to change this around. You can almost guess what I'm going to do here. I want, to, I want the same equation, x plus y equals 2. But I, now, I want that equation now in 
R3. Okay. So what's missing from this equation is Z. And Z goes up and down. Remember, Z is the vertical coordinate. Z goes up and down. So as long as my X's and Y's stay on the line X plus Y equals 2, Z can go up or down from that. What am I going to get? What am I going to get? Well, I'm going to draw it. I'm going to draw it. So here are my axes, X, Y, Z. So now I want to draw the line X plus Y. And, and I didn't make a mistake. I, want, I meant line. I want to draw the line X plus Y equals 2, but in 3 space. The same line that's in, the, in part D of this, but in 3 space. So here it is. Here's, here's approximately that line. But I'm only going to draw the line from intercept to intercept. Just looking at a part of the line. So if I can do this, there it is. So there's part of the line x plus y equals 2. Here are the intercepts 1, 2, 1, 2. And definitely every point on that line, and remember the, the line extends beyond. But every point on that line satisfies x plus y equals 2. But I could also, at each point on that line, also go up or down any amount, and I'll still have the equation satisfied. Okay. So if I can go up or down from that line, I'm looking at another vertical plane. So let's draw that. Let's draw that idea here. So I'm going to attempt to do that without pausing the video. So it's really a daring of me, <laughs> but whatever, okay, so here we go, sort of tempting fate by doing this, here we go, this is sort of okay, okay, so I could have do this, I'm going to draw, draw a specific point in red. X, Y, has to end up on the line because X plus Y equals 2, but I could have Z equals anything. X, Y, Z, where the X and Y satisfy being on the line. And I chose to go up, but I could have gone x, y, and then down or, or anything. So what I'm going to get is a vertical plane. Now, I've only drawn a little piece of the vertical plane. Remember, I, this, this vertical plane extends infinitely up, infinitely down, and in all directions following the line x plus y equals 2. However, my description is I get a vertical plane, a vertical plane. Passing through the line x plus y equals 2. That gets the job done. Yeah, that would kind of describe it pretty well, I think. So, as I mentioned, um, equations in R3 generally represent surfaces, and these planes are surfaces. And I'd like to, I'd like to just as, as an introduction, I'd like to talk about a different sur another surface. In order to do that, we need to review something and then extend it into three, three space. We need to re review the concept of the distance formula. Distance formula. Distance formula is something you've seen in a few courses already. If I want the distance, the distance, between two points x1, y1 and x2, y2 that distance is given by the distance formula it's the square root of x2 
minus x1 or x1 minus x2, just the orders, but not important, plus uh, y2 minus y1 squared. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Think about this. What's the distance formula just a fancy name for? What's the distance formula? Actually, it's not that fancy name. What's the distance formula just another name for that we learned in uh, geometry? The answer is it's the Pythagorean theorem. That's all it is. It's all that is. So what do you suppose the distance between two, two points in three spaces is going to look like? So if you're thinking that, well, maybe it just involves a, a third difference squared, you're right. Okay, so the distance, the distance between points, let's say, x1, y1, d1, and x2, y2, z2, let's see, let's do it like that, x2, y2, z2, is given by the very easy to generalize, or easy general, easily generalized formula, x2 minus x1 squared, square root of o, plus uh, y2 minus y1 squared, plus z2 minus z1 squared. Okay. I'm not going to bother to derive it. You're not responsible for deriving it. And um, you, can, you can read about the, the, mid, the corresponding the midpoint formula for points uh, in, in R3. The idea here uh, on camera, though, is I want to talk about another. I want to talk about another um, uh, surface. Okay. Here's a description of the surface. Here's a description of the surface. The surface is the set of all points that are a fixed distance away from a given point in three space. What is that surface? The set of all points that are a fixed distance from a given point in R3. So I have a given point. Just imagine some point in front of you, and you want to, you want to describe the set of all points that are one unit or one foot away from that one point. What is that? What is that? It's a sphere. It's a sphere. If you, if you have a specific point floating, just floating in space, not moving, just floating in space, and you move one unit in every direction. When you're finished, after you're moved along along every possible line segment, one unit away from, from that given point, you got a sphere. Okay. So the distance formula can be used to, to, uh, to get the, the formula of the sphere, because the distance from that single point that, that we call the center has to be one. So if you missed what I just said there, don't blame you. I don't really like the way I said it. The sphere. Suppose we have this, the center of the sphere is some point H, K, L. And suppose that the radius of the sphere is R. Right. Let's assume that this, the coordinates of the center of the sphere are all positive. So um, I've drawn the sphere for us. The center of the sphere is, is at some point HKL, and the radius is R. So if, if I, to draw a point actually on the, on the sphere, let's do this. Let's draw another great circle on the sphere. So here's a particular point, x, y, z, on the sphere. And here's the center of the sphere, h, k, l. h, k, l. And I'm going to draw a little green line segment from the center of the sphere to that arbitrary point on the sphere. 
the distance between the center of the sphere and that point x, y, z is the radius r. So the distance formula can be used to get the equation of that sphere. And if you've already anticipated the equation of the sphere by just generalizing the equation of a circle, you're, you're, you're spot on. But I'm going to use the distance formula to, to, to quickly derive it. So the distance between the center of the sphere should be uh, x minus h squared. That's sort of the x2 minus x1 squared plus y minus k squared plus uh, z minus l quantity squared. Squared of all that equals the radius. So the the standard form, the standard form of a sphere centered at h k l of radius r, we get by squaring both sides. It's just x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. If I had no, if I had no third term there. I got r squared. That's the standard form of a circle in R2 centered at hk. So putting in the little correction here to get us our sphere, that's the equation of a sphere. So this, a lot of this stuff in, in uh, graphing in 3D are really kind of just generalizes what we've already seen. Some of it doesn't. Sometimes we have to, to look at some new stuff. But, but uh, anyways, that's um, that. So what if I wanted to describe uh, a set of points? So we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna end this this lecture by describing a set of, of points, so, similar to the last problem. Describe describe the, the set of points. Satisfy the set of points. In R3, satisfying, satisfying this, and it's not an equation, it's an inequality. The inequality says that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is between 1 and 4. So what do you think? What do you think that is a good description of the set of all points satisfying this? Well, I'm going to start describing how we can think about that. And, and if you think along the way, if you think of it along the way, great, great. So this, this is really two inequalities. This is really two inequalities. It says that um, 1 is less than or equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. It also says that x squared plus y squared plus z squared has to be less than or equal to 4. Let's look at that last inequality. We need both of these inequalities to, be, to hold true. So let's look at the last inequality. What happens, what happens when we we have the right-hand side actually equal to 4. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. That's an equation of a sphere. This is a sphere, just this portion. This is a sphere. Uh, the center is the origin. H, K, and L are all 0. And the radius is not 4, it's what? 2. So now imagine the, in, the inequality there. Now x squared plus y squared plus z squared has to be less than or equal to 4. So the, the outer boundary, if you will, of, of, the, of that second inequality is a sphere of radius 2. So we're going to get just that, just that one inequality, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 4. That's all the set of all the points inside and on, both inside and on it, the sphere centered at the origin of radius 2. But what about the other inequality? What about the other one, which I'll kind of identify in red? What about that other inequality? And I'm going to write it with the 1 on the right-hand side. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared is greater than or equal to 1. 
Well, what happens when x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1? Well, we get another sphere. Sphere, center, the origin, radius 1. So both of these inequalities have to hold true. Either uh, I'm inside a sphere of radius 2 centered at the origin or look at the inequality for the second for the red inequality it's greater than 1 so I'm I'm on the sphere of radius 1 or outside of it so when you have the inequality x squared plus y squared plus z squared is greater than or equal to 1 that's the set of all points that are either on a sphere centered at 1 at the origin on a unit sphere or outside so combining using the word and, that word and is real important. I'm either inside a sphere of radius 2 or outside a sphere of radius 1, both centered at the origin. So what am I on? Okay, the, the net description then might look something like this. So the net description might be the set of points, the set of points that lie between uh, or on, I'll put or on in parentheses, I think you could leave off the parentheses, the spheres uh, centered at the origin Center at the origin, 0, 0, 0, having radius, having radii, having plural, plural, plural of radius is radii, uh, 1 and 2. So I'm between two spheres. One has radius 1, one has radius 2. Both spheres are centered at the origin. All the points between those spheres or on, the, on those actual spheres. So I kind of have like a... A hollow golf ball, sort of. I think we'll, I'll stick away from that because um, I'm not sure that golf balls are hollow. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. That ends this this first uh, this video segment. Um, go ahead and dig into homework. It's posted on Canvas, and I'm looking forward to talking with you again soon.